Hi there and thanks for joining me. Today we're going to continue in our education of steel fabrication. Specifically, we'll be discussing different welding processes. Now based off of your trade, training, and experience, a lot of different things can come to people's minds when they think stick, MIG, TIG, or flux core welding. But not all industries use or view these welding processes the same way. So today we're going to discuss the differences between them and how they're applied. So stay tuned. Now there's a great debate on social media surrounding which welding process is the best or hardest to do. And today, I'm not going to be touching that question. Additionally, welding processes are defined as being either manual, semi-automatic, automatic, or machine welding processes. And today, I'm only going to review the primary manual and semi-automatic weld processes, which are shielded metal arc welding, gas tungsten arc welding, gas metal arc welding, and flux cord arc welding. Perhaps at another date, I'll cover submerged arc welding, electro slag welding, and electron beam welding, just not today. So let's begin with shielded metal arc welding. Shielded metal arc welding, or stick welding, is considered to be a manual welding process because the arc stability and the weld deposition is controlled by the operator's hand and not by the machine. Now stick welding is one of the most common and widely taught welding processes, but that doesn't mean that it's easy to do, or at least not very well. Because the arc is stabilized and the molten metal is purified by the gases produced from the melting of the flux off of the electrode, things like wind won't induce porosity into your weldment, making it very versatile. Indeed, some electrodes are really good at burning right through rust, dirt, and even paint. Industries and employees that use this process can include mechanics fixing heavy equipment out in the field, metal deckers securing deck to the top of beams, and some of the highest paid pipe welders working on heavy industrial and petrochemical projects. Gas tungsten arc welding or TIG welding is also a manual welding process. Again, because the arc stability and weld deposition are controlled by the operator's hands and not the machine. But in this case, it requires both, one coming from each. Now there are many variations of tungsten electrodes gases, and filler metals that can be used when TIG welding, and that's usually based off of the type of metal that you're trying to join. TIG welding is highly effective at welding not just carbon and stainless steels, but non-ferrous materials as well, including aluminum and titanium. Because of the centralized source and containment of heat, it's an excellent welding process for trying to control heat distortion. Industries that commonly use the TIG welding process include sheet metal, mechanical, automotive, and pipe fabricators, and it's also pretty much the go-to for anyone involved in the fabrication, maintenance, and repair of food processing equipment. Welcome back, and next we're going to talk about gas metal arc welding, or MIG welding, which happens to be our first semi-automatic welding process. Now even though the operator controls what is sometimes referred to as the gun, the torch, the stinger, the lead, or the whip, the weld deposition, or the wire feed, is still controlled by the machine, thus making it only a semi-automatic welding process. Now MIG welding is commonly used in the production of both mild and stainless steel products, and it's also used in both thin and heavy weldments. There are four modes of transfer that can be utilized while MIG welding. Those are short circuit, globular, spray, and pulse. And I wanna take a second and talk about the short circuit transfer of gas metal arc welding. If you work in structural and look in AWS code D11 for structural steel, under clause three, section 3.2.1 for pre-qualified welding processes, you'll see that the short circuit transfer is excluded from that list. 
Now that doesn't mean that short circuit cannot be used in structural, it simply isn't pre-qualified. So a contractor can qualify that process under clause four. And so long as they use a constant voltage power source and the appropriate filler material meeting the minimum tensile strength requirements of the project, they can still use short circuit transfer of gas metal arc welding, even though it is not common in structural steel fabrication. And lastly, let's talk about flux cord arc welding. Flux cord arc welding is also a semi-automatic welding process for the same reason that gas metal arc welding is. Even though the operator is manually applying the weld, the weld deposition or the wire feed is still controlled by a machine. Now there are two types of flux cord arc welding that I want to discuss with you today and they're very different one from another. The first one I'll bring up is for field application. The most commonly used flux cord wire in the field is Lincoln's NR232 E71 T-8. And the T in that designation stands for tubular, meaning that the wire is hollow. Now, as the name flux cord would suggest, the inside of that wire is filled with flux, so it's inner shielded. And just as with shielded metal arc welding, as that flux melts, it produces a gas that stabilizes the arc and also purifies the molten metal. And because of that, things and other elements such as wind won't negatively affect your weld, making this an excellent wire for use out in the field. Now that wire is welded in the direct current electrode negative polarity. However, in the shop, they tend to use a different type of wire. They use one that's either an E70 or an E71 T-1 that has either a C and M or both at the end of the designation. That wire is welded in the direct current electrode positive polarity. And the C means it needs to be used with either 100% carbon dioxide or the M means it needs carbon and argon mix. Now, if this welding wire requires the addition of a gaseous shielding agent, it begs the question, why would you use it? And the answer is that it has incredibly high deposition rates. If you have a lot of big welds you need to accomplish, or definitely a lot of full pens that you need to get out the door, this wire can help you do so in a much shorter amount of time, saving you money. You can rest assured that these two wires weld very differently one from another, so it's important that you know which one it is that you're working with. Thanks for tuning in today. If you enjoyed this video, then be sure to give it a thumbs up and then check out our website where you can subscribe to receive videos like this every single week, bringing you only the best in steel construction education. And while you're there, be sure to check out our list of courses, providing you a deeper and more intensive study on topics just like this one. You see here at the SBC Group, it's our mission to help you know the most so that you can do your best. And finally, if you should have any questions or concerns about where you're going to spend eternity and you don't have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ, feel free to reach out to me and I'll be glad to help you with that too. Thank you and God bless.